Hey friends, welcome back. Today we're going to do another book versus film comparison and decide which one was better. And today we're comparing none other than Ready Player One, written by Ernest Cline and directed by Steven Spielberg. Now normally I divide the comparisons in three major segments, characters, atmosphere, and the ending. This time I'm going to add also a segment for plot because there were so many changes in the quest part of the movie. So after comparing all four categories, you can tell me which one do you think is better, the book or the film. So let's get started. Ready Player One takes place in a world where resources are low and people are in poverty, but everybody has access to a virtual reality in a place called The Oasis. The Oasis, created by James Halliday, allows people to leave this horrible world behind and go inside a world where they can be whatever they want to be. Now, when the creator passes away, he leaves a global message and let people know that he has created an Easter egg inside The Oasis, and whoever finds it first will be the owner of The Oasis and also the owner of, I think, a trillion dollars. The quest is riddled with pop culture, video games, and movie references, so only the true hardcore fans will be able to find it. Now let's start with our main character, Wade Watts. Overall, I feel like the movie definitely got Wade's character right. Now one major aspect they changed about Wade's character is that they scrapped the whole high school part. Wade is a high school student and that's where he finds the very first key, in a planet where there are all these high schools. So it seems like it would have been way more probable that a student would have found a key. Another major thing they changed about Wade is that he wasn't good looking to start with. He's actually very chubby and he's very insecure about his looks. And I also think that's a major thing that plays into his relationship with Artemis. But eventually he does have this big transformation where he gets fit because he gets new gear, he gets into this like Oasis health program. So Wade definitely doesn't start off looking the way he does in the movie, but that's sort of like the end result for sure. But I do think it's important in the book to show that Wade can be very down about himself because the juxtaposition of him being Parsival in the Oasis and how he starts to grow and rise to the top is a very interesting character development. There were definitely other changes to other characters. For example, Irock has a much smaller part in the book. He's just meant to be this annoying kid who goes to high school with Parsible and H, and he kind of lets a lot of people know later on that the key is in Ludus. But in the movie, they decided to make him into this mercenary who is also TJ Miller, and um, I don't think anybody asked for that. Now, a huge aspect that they changed in the movie was the enemy, also known as IOI. They kind of completely changed their identity even though they are still very evil. In the movie, they are a virtual reality equipment manufacturing corporation. And they basically want to own the Oasis so they can sell more ads and make more money. But in the book, they're like the biggest internet service provider and they have a major monopoly. And if they can own the Oasis, they would definitely control pretty much everything. And it really bothers me that they changed the simple but important fact because I think it could have been such a relevant topic to today's political climate about the internet and net neutrality. And I feel like they decided to shy away from that, but it's such a relevant and still very important topic topic to somehow represent in this story, and I don't know, it really bummed me out that they didn't do that. Also, in the book, they feel way more dangerous and way more omnipresent because they have access to all of your information and they can find you anywhere. And while they show that a little bit in the movie, there's something definitely more ominous and dark about them. Like in the book, you definitely don't doubt that they will kill you if they find you. As opposed to a bunch of wannabe nerds in the movie who are just doing their job, but look how unevil they are. Another change they made in character was Artemis. Now the first time that Artemis and Parsifal meet is when they find the first key. Now before you ever see Artemis in the book, you already know so much about her and you already know that Wade has a major crush on her. So the moment when she's finally there in this very isolated place with him, you feel just as excited as Wade is to see her. But there's also a huge part of the story where Artemis completely disappears. Right after the whole party scene where Parsifal was like, I love you, and she was like, stop putting me in a manic pixie dream girl box. She kind of distances herself from him and decides to focus on the race. But that sort of separation from them moves things to the second act. Oh, also, Artemis doesn't get captured by the IOI. Wade does, but he does it on purpose. And it bothers me that they change this a little bit. I know they wanted to do that so they could include her more in the story and she has more time on screen. But the fact that Wade decides to get captured is a very cool badass plan 
and it shows how smart he is and how prepared he was to deal with the whole situation and save his friends, but you're gonna have to read the book. Now, let's move on to the segment of the plot and talk about the keys and the gates in the book. Now, this is easily the most disappointing part of the movie because the entire quest is so clever in the book, and it feels like in the movie they kind of dumbed it down because obviously they didn't have enough time, but obviously they were also worried people wouldn't get the references. So, in the book, there are three three keys, but there are also three gates. Now the whole egg hunt starts with a clue that Halliday leaves behind. That clue will take them to the location of the first key where they will have a challenge. Once you pass that challenge, you get the key and you have to find the gate with the next clue. Now I completely understand that you couldn't have the keys and the gates, the movie would have been too long. But I still feel like the challenges in the book were much smarter, harder, and more complex. The location of the first key, the copper key, takes place in the planet Ludus, and it's actually a large scale version of Dungeons and Dragons, the module Tomb of Horrors. And once that part is over, you have to beat the Dungeons and Dragons baddie in a game of joust. I mean, how cool is that? Can you have imagined a whole large scale version of Dungeons and Dragons? The second challenge was a movie challenge, but it was the movie War Games starring Matthew Broderick, and instead of going through the actual setting, you have to actually act like Matthew Broderick, and you get extra bonus points if you have the same inflections and stuff like that. I will admit that the Shining scene in the movie is pretty cool. It's super awesome to see a horror movie in a completely different context, and the idea that you can actually go through the hotel and find the same horrible things while looking for a different quest is actually pretty cool. But overall, I feel like the challenges in the book help you see how smart Wade is and how much he deserves to win. Whereas I feel like in the movie, he feels very lucky with the company of so many people. Now let's talk about atmosphere. I feel like this was a big change. Look. It's Spielberg. It's somehow connected to the 80s and there are teenagers and children's fighting off adults. You know what it's going to be like. Like I said before, in the book everything feels a little bit more dangerous. Wade's living situation is definitely a lot rougher in the book. And while they do show the explosion in the stacks in the movie, oh, it's so much darker in the book. I'm telling you, the IOI is really scary in the book. Main characters die in the book and it makes you feel like this is no longer a fun game. This is life or death. And Nolan Sorrento, who's sort of like the face of the IOI, is a total prick. And I know he's despicable in the movie, but the fact that you don't see him as much in the book, he only has like a few moments here and there where you see him, makes it all the more scary seeing his IOI number up in the scoreboard, knowing that he's been around. It's much scarier than what they show in the movie, which is just like a suit guy who you kind of hate, and he's kind of like doofy and stupid. And that's something that Spielberg and other 80 movies tend to do in these sort of like adventure family movies. You make the villain into this very dumb, ridiculous thing who looks uncool in front of the kids and that kind of makes it a little bit better and less threatening. So if you can think about the principal in Breakfast Club or the villains in The Goonies where they have like those silly moments and then suddenly they're not that scary even though they are the villains, that's kind of what happens with Nolan Sorrento. Now let's move on to the ending and I promise no spoilers, or at least I'll try. Now the movie serves you a big classic Spielberg ending. You know the one. Meaning there's gonna be a big display where there's gonna be a huge crowd. The hero is praised and then the police arrives to take care of the really bad guys. Because nobody dies here, not really. And then there's gonna be one final moment where the villain does something stupid like get punched in the face or trip on something and ha ha ha, it's so funny, it's not really that scary or bad kids. And then the heroes meet their mentor who somehow brings a new piece of information that none of the characters knew about. Big kid round of applause, the end. I'm sorry, I think I said I wasn't gonna spoil it, and I think that, um, that spoils everything. Now, it's definitely cute. I don't hate it. However, in the book, it's a little bit more quiet, a little bit different, but Wade's really beautiful final moment is that he meets Artemis in real life, and that is... I think more sweet and meaningful in the book than in the movie. In the movie they try to do it halfway because they want to include Artemis a lot more and that's understandable. I think she's a great character. But in general, I won't complain. I think the movie handled the Anorex Castle battle really great. You get to see a lot of characters that you like and the Iron Giant is the Iron Giant. And while the movie definitely and completely Spielbergerized the story, I think it was enjoyable and still a fun watch. Okay guys, so those are the major differences I found between the book and the film. You let me know if you've read it, if you've watched it, which one was your favorite. In my opinion, the book is definitely superior. I think you can really take your time and savor all the references and even learn new things if you didn't know of them. I think the world building is complex and interesting. He takes you slowly through it without being overly detailed, but you completely get the kind of game and rules that you're playing. 
And in the end, I feel like the book is a true homage to all gamers everywhere. Their love for the game, their lives, their struggles, and you definitely understand it a lot more if you are not part of that. If you watched the movie and you haven't read the book, do it. You will find a lot of surprises. It's a completely different experience. And if you read the book and then watched the movie, I'm sorry. So guys, don't forget to let me know which one you prefer when it comes to Ready Player One, the book or the film. Which one was better? Let me know in the comments section down below. Or if you want, you can let me know on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook if you look for a Cine Club channel. If you like more videos like these comparing books and films, subscribe to my channel and like this video so I know you like them and I'll continue to make more of them. That's everything for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and share and I will see you on our next movie date.